Okay, welcome everyone to this continuation of what are my favorite subfields, fields, whatever of mathematics. My very biased collection, obviously. Um, today I would like to tell you about, again, a nice mixture between uh, kind of two different fields. Something more like probabilistic in nature, like random. <laughs> random is not really a field, but somewhat, something probabilistic in nature indicated by the word random and something quite discrete, like graph theory or network theory. I always want to promote that it should be called network, but uh, well, a graph, something with vertices and edges, something like something like this. This is this, this is a good graph. Here is a good graph. Wonderful. And, uh, and, and, and let's add another vertex, whatever, something like this. A graph, something with vertices and edges, something that is clearly discrete. So I'm really only talking about finite graphs here. So that's certainly a discrete uh, amount of information that you would like to study. And random graph theory, kind of wants to study properties of average graphs, of random graphs. Um, we'll tell you in a second what it is. But kind of the main observation, why discrete structures, obvi obviously, obviously, often, often have kind of, well, are amenable to uh, kind of methods from probabilistic, probabilistic theory and stochastics and statistics to be uh, applicable to, to discrete problems are the prime numbers. So the prime numbers essentially appear randomly. So here's my illustration of the prime numbers. Don't try to look for patterns. That's the whole point. Prime numbers pop up randomly. You will not see any nice patterns here. Uh, so here, like prime numbers, and then you zoom out and they mostly look like, yeah, literally, they look like noise. That's how I imagine noise would look like. And yeah, so kind of the algebraic study of prime numbers is restricted to kind of very few theorems you can prove about them. Um, but the analytic theory or the probabilistic theory is very rich and it's probably what most number theorists do nowadays. Kind of some form of some analytic theory, some form of an analytic way of studying them. So that happens when something is like random when something behaves like noise. Then usually you should apply or very often you can apply uh, methods from graph theory uh, from graph theory <laughs> methods from prob probability to uh, attack those type of questions and it turns out that for random graphs the thing is just the same i will tell you in a second what a random graph is uh, but a random graph if you really zoom out it's just a mess it's just it's just nothing nice anymore um you kind of choose random edges lee average graphs, I'll tell you in a second, second what it is. So it's kind of the same pattern. As soon as you zoom out, you have many, many vertices. And this, this looks like, this looks like noise. Let's be realistic. This looks like noise. So maybe the correct way of studying them would be again, uh, probabilistic methods. So what I will do is the following. I use the following model of random graphs, which I call, or which is usually called GNP. So N is the number of vertices. N is just number of vert. Yeah, very simple. And P is a probability. So for every pair of, of, of a vertex, so I have a pair of a vertex, and with P, I put an edge. With probability P, I put an edge, okay? So if P is a half, then you essentially flip a coin for every pair of vertices, whether you want to put an edge or not. And this is usually called a random graph, and you think of them as kind of average type graphs. And if you do that, so let me just uh, pull up here my little illustration. So Bernoulli graph distribution, whatever, 50 is my n, so 50 vertices. That's what you should be able to see here. Probability is 0 0.5 to put an edge. And if I just do that, um, it, that's what I mean. It looks like it looks like noise. I can zoom in a little bit, uh, but I don't want to spoil the story of what's going up. So here it looks really like noise. And I can go a little bit down here, 10% probability to put in an edge and fewer edges, obviously. 0.1% probability put an edge and it actually already gets pretty disconnected but with 50% so we really flip a coin it's just yeah it's it's, it's it's just noise let's be realistic it's just noise so you should somehow study them um slightly differently and that's a, the whole idea of random graph theory similar to prime numbers graphs look like noise yeah so these are my graphs that look like noise and here's something you can actually prove about uh, patterns and randomness about almost all graphs about random graphs uh random graphs are almost always connected and this kind of makes sense if i just well here i just have the the number of connected graphs versus all graphs 
Note that it doesn't go to zero because of this little bit strange scaling here on my on my y-axis. So this is 0 0.5, 50%. It's essentially 100% around uh, 16, 17, 18 vertices. So we have 18 vertices. Essentially 100%. So almost all graphs are actually connected. And well, random graphs are. And if you just look at this illustration, right? there are so many edges. It's just, yeah, whatever. So here I did that an edge count for a random graph with 10 vertices. And we can actually run that uh, once more. And you will always see... It kind of forms like a really nice, uh, what is it, uh, bi binomial distribution. And we are only at 10 vertices here. So if I go to, to 20, and it will actually form a, a nicer binomial distribution, a very nice binomial distribution. And a graph with ver 20 vertices has roughly here about something like 100 edges. That's, that's quite, quite, quite a lot, actually. So um, the point is here, uh, random graphs tend to have a lot of edges. So they're supposed to be connected in average graphs and have a lot of edges. So they're supposed to be connected. And you can actually so show something non-trivial about those graphs, which are mostly noise. And this is what kind of random graph theory would study. So here is a really beautiful one. I'm going to run that for you in a second. So N G and P was our random graph again. And if P is constant, uh, whatever it is, even if it's 0 0.01, um, eventually the graph will be connected if you just have enough vertices. So if you don't believe me that this, this works, so let's go back to this one. So this one is clearly connected. If I put it to 0, 1, well, it's unconnected, but I, if, if I put in, what is a good number, 500 vertices, um, it's, yeah, it's, it's almost completely connected at one point, right? So it's just, just two non-connected ones. So if, if P is constant, then almost all graphs are connected. Just n needs to be very large. And then there's something fun. So you can make p depend on n. So if p is roughly 1 over n, then you will see this fun uh, example of this, what is called a giant component. I'm not going to define what a giant component is, but we can actually run that. Um, so here's an example of what a giant component is. Let me zoom out a little bit. So here, Bernoulli distribution again, 2,000 vertices, and I take um, this ratio here, well, 2 over 2 over n to make it a, bit, a little bit nicer to see. And I just run it and it take a while. And you could easily see so I can run it again. You could clearly see the giant component and then a lot of tiny unconnected components. And this is, again, a theorem you can prove. So I can run that again. You see the giant component. And there's a really large chance for me to do that. And I run that again and you see the giant component and a lot of little things. You run that again. And you see the giant component and a lot of little graphs. And again, one of the runs more because it's so much fun to do it. And we'll see a giant component and a lot of little graphs. It's kind of that what random graph theory studies. Kind of surprising patterns that you can discover in the average graphs, right? So that's kind of kind of really, really exciting. So almost all graphs are connected. And even if you let the probability of putting an edge be varying with n. Even in that case, you get get well, get this giant component type thing, which is kind of a very interesting example. Eventually, it gets unconnected. It gets a lot of tiny components. So if uh, if the probability is too small compared to n, and it kind of makes intuitively sense, I guess. But the real strength of random graph theory comes into the game when um, there is some property that is like really really difficult to nail down combinatorially, precisely, algebraically, whatever you want. That's the real strength of random graph theory. So there are a lot of statements like the click number. So the, the kind of the, the largest connected co connected component where everything connects to everything. It's like a really difficult problem to compute. And computing that is NP hard. It is like very, very difficult. Mm, the fastest algorithms I know they are run still like in, in exponential time, like I, I forgot what it was, three to the n over three, where n is the number of vertices or some, some shit like that. So, so very, very slow. To compute the click number is very, very difficult. But it's not difficult to see the average click number. And there's a fun, kind of a fun thing that happens for the average click number, which I did here. I just, um, so here, this is just, is exactly the same type of program I had running before. I just did, 
uh, those 50 1 over 2 graphs, so coin flip graphs, and 10,000 of them, and then computed the, the click number. And you can see a clear pattern, so the click number sparks. It just, uh, just spikes at one value, which is around, well, it's kind of the theorem is that it's around this value here. So it's around 11 in this case. And that's kind of an easy way. So almost all graphs have the same click number, but determining it explicitly is still a very difficult problem. And this is really where this random graph theory shines, because the click number is just an example of many, many things that are really difficult to compute, whether a graph is Hamiltonian, finding a Hamiltonian cycle or um, colorings or something like that, when actually most graphs kind of are very easy to determine. So in other words, whenever you have such a pattern like this, if you give up on the idea of having a completely precise algorithm, then you can speed up things a lot and some kind of form of a greedy algorithm in this case will not give you a perfect result, but it will give you kind of a good result somehow. Um, although this problem is very often said to be uh, hard to approximate, uh, depends a bit what you want to do. But anyway, the kind of the random graph, for the random graphs it's easy, most graphs have the same click number, which is kind of a very, very beautiful statement. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.